Paul's asylum claims I'm going to ask you three times now about your leadership and what you're going to do about it and how no, you I'm feel about the I'm fact that they it. have insulted the American people. You can't just talk over me. Just answer I'm the question if you would. No, I that was Fox House and unofficial Trump advisor Lou Dobbs shutting down Republican Arizona Senate candidate Martha McSally for not giving President Trump the border wall he wants. Trump's failure to get cash for that wall in the recent spending bill passed by Congress might be one of the reasons he's sending troops to the border to build a wall. Here's what we know about this hastily drawn up plan. Trump wants 2,000 to 4,000 troops on the border. Troops would work on a wall and serve until it's built. Governor Doug Ducey and other border governors will activate their National Guards, and it's not clear who is paying the bill for those troops. But is there a crisis on the border, as the president claims? Joining us to discuss all that and more, Lori Roberts of the Arizona Republic and John Gabriel, editor-in-chief of Ricochet.com. Good to see you both. Every two years, like clockwork, immigration blows up as an issue during an election season. Uh, it's happening this time. There is a sudden crisis. Lori Roberts, can you see the origins of this crisis? Well, I would color me surprised to find out that we have lawlessness on the border and that we are in a position of crisis. Surely if it is as lawless as to warrant sending out the troops, Governor Doug Ducey would have been on top of this long ago and called for something. Yet the first we hear about is, is on Tuesday when, the, when Trump President Trump hints about it. Um, so if there really has indeed been this lawless situation on the border, I'm wondering why we didn't know about it here first before they knew in Washington. John, wh where's it coming from? The, the, the numbers DHS is putting out say there's been a 200% increase, a surge at the border. Do you buy that? Um, I'm not sure if I do. It'll be interesting to see the numbers, but nobody can seem to explain where exactly these new num numbers came from. And if you look back over the past six months, it's been going down. So it would be an anomaly if March is actually this bad. I, I think it uh, bears looking at. I think the main problem is Trump has been taking a whole bunch of criticism that he did not fund the wall that, if memory serves, Mexico was supposed to pay for. I believe that was promised. However, uh, he didn't fund it, so there isn't work getting done on it. A lot of criticism is coming from his supporters, so I think it might be a chance for him to look tough and look like he's getting stuff done, even though he doesn't have a specific plan of how he would execute that. And, and this idea that's out there, we don't know how firm it is, but having troops on the border, building a wall and staying there until it's built, is this even conceivable? Well, one thing to consider, um, the cost to do that will be about $164 a day for each person that they um, apprehend, because presumably that's part of what they're going to be doing there. He doesn't like catch and release, so we're going to add more and more and more people here. In the meantime, we're going to be paying for National Guard troops to be there for, I don't know, it must be years. It takes a long time to build a big, beautiful wall, especially when nobody's given you the funding to do it. Uh, an interesting a GAO report shows that when troops were at the border in 2006-08, when George Bush, Bush sent them there, when President Obama sent them in 2010, they, they can only help arrests. They can't make arrests. They helped in less than 5% of all arrests. So you have to wonder, what on earth are they going to be doing out well, there? Nobody seems to have a plan anyway. Um, President Trump doesn't have anything written down. We don't know the when. We don't know the where. We don't know the why. Um, apparently, he's going to leave it to the governors to figure out what to do. Okay, so what about Governor Ducey? He's all for this, rah, rah, but as you said, he's never said anything about uh, lawlessness at the border. So he's all for it at the same time. He's been embracing Mexico for the last several years. Does this put him in a tough spot? It definitely does. He couldn't have welcomed this news, especially with no details and the president just kicking it into the court of the governors. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles this, trying to be a good party man and doing what the leader of the Republican Party says, but at the same time trying to make sure he doesn't ruffle too many feathers. I don't know how you straddle that line. It's going to be very difficult because he's, he's worked very hard to improve relations with Sonora. And to keep an arm's length relationship from Trump. But let's play this out a little bit more. Immigration is now an issue. It is April. We have an August primary. You have people like Joe Arpaio in this race. We saw what happened in 2014. Remember that surge in 2014, mm -hmm. June of 2014, and the governor's race that Doug Ducey won just turned on a dime. Mm -hmm. Could that have, could this issue, troops on the border, surge at the border, have that kind of impact? Oh, I think that's on the one of the reasons it, that this issue is now coming up. Um, there is a concern about a democratic blue wave or whatever you want to call it. What better way to motivate your own 
base, but to throw out some juicy red meat like immigration and lawlessness at the border and crisis. Um, the interesting thing though is, is, is if we really do have this lawlessness and crisis, why are the troops not already down there? On Tuesday or Wednesday, we were told that they could be there as quickly as Wednesday evening. Here it is Friday, still nobody knows whose troops they're going to be, who's in charge, and most importantly, who's going to pay for it. Yeah. Big question. All right, we'll have more to talk about in just a minute. First, our tweet of the week. Teachers have walked off the job in Oklahoma after demanding and getting a raise. The governor there compared them to teenagers who want a new car. Educator Don Brockman posted this video from the Oklahoma Capitol. Oh my God, she tweeted. We followed Governor Mary Fallon up the stairs, so we shared it with the crowd, and they took out their car keys. I'm crying. Listen to the crowd. my car that is crazy when we come back the latest education moves in arizona and a teachers union here says it's ready to negotiate with the governor stay with us